Hey, this is Wardon, and this is the second part to the refactor. I think it's like 10, 12, some, something like that. But this is the second part where we discuss the war mono behavior, the new way that we're going to use to streamline our content so we can write better code that's a lot cleaner. Now, if you missed the other part, Please go back because this will discuss, if you do not, you're not going to realize what's going on whatsoever. So please go back to the previous video and watch that before you watch this one so that way you get an understanding of what's going on. Now, without further ado, we are going to discuss these methods that are just crazy sauce. So here we go let's just in our weapon scripts we usually have where we alert the position of the weapon to where we need to go okay but I don't want to do this for write this code multiple times uh, okay and we have multiple types of weapons and things like that and all of them could do something different and it's just it's ridiculous we just need a method that does what we need to do yeah we can put this lerp in the line and stuff but why do that why do that when we can create a method to do it for us and then just pass the values and with doing this if we have a weapon and we create this method this way we don't have to worry about messing up with one of our variables because all we're doing is passing a transform, a position, and an aim speed. Okay, so it makes it a lot less likely that we will make an error. Like it would be easy to put weapon t dot position, and then lerp the position to the target thing, and then oh, oh guess what? We went from local units to world units. So if we put zero zero zero, our weapon's gonna go off the screen and go oh yeah I messed up you know I mean it's it's not hard to do I mean I've done it a hundred times and I'm not even gonna lie I've done it a hundred times and I'm not gonna lie about it <laughs> it's just that easy to do so by doing this and we have weapon actions and then every weapon that we have in the game inherits from weapon actions so these methods are accessible by anything that has that inherits from weapon actions. And then weapon actions will be inherited by the weapon class that we want to use and so on and so forth. Kind of a little bit long chain, but for the most part it works really well. Okay, so this is for set position, which goes into our rifle class. And we get a nice clean... Thing as hey we got vector 3 distance and then we just slot that in there three variables v not you almost cannot mess up from that I mean transform a, a vector 3 and an aim speed I mean that's that's really easy to set in there instead of lerp and messing up the position, the target, and then not times in by delta time. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff that can happen between here to here that can mess up on your game. Okay, but by doing this, it just makes it a whole lot easier. Now, this raycast sorted. This raycast sorted takes a range, or layer mask gun our transform bullet hole and then take new damage you know our damage variable that we have created now we've got these vector threes random a direction and then we tell the array what direction to shoot in and stuff like that we have a hit transform and then we have the fine objects and what fine object is, is 
another little method that we have. Okay, hit transform, find object. We take ray, alt the hit point, the range, layer mass, weapon transform, and a bullet hole. Now, I'm just saying, this bullet hole thing, this is not, uh, this is basically null still. Okay, because what happens is hit transform is not null, then we go tag weapon. And what happens is, in when we find our object, we do all these overloads still because we're passing the stuff around. And what ends up happening is bullet hole gets instantiated here. This is a regular game object, a bullet hole. And then we go bullet hole for hit. This basically gives us a string, and then we got our weapon layer. Okay. This is another new variable. The weapon layer, the variable, you know what it does. You give it a string and it will return the game object. Okay? So there's no surprise there. Tag, if it's moved. Oh, no. Weapon tag does the damaging. If it's a movable thing, like some piece of trash on the ground and you shoot it and it moves, yeah, that, that's basically all it does. No default behavior because if we don't know what to do, then we don't want the game to break. We just have it default to nothing. Okay. Which it's it's not hard to do. And you can put different cases here. And these these are tags anyway. This is tag. Okay, so it's it's pretty simple. Alright. Now, this game object bullet hole, every gun's gonna have a bullet hole. So I see no reason to sit there and put this function in every single gun. I mean, I'm sorry, but it just, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to have this function do the stuff that it needs to do in one place. And that's the whole point of this. Okay. I'd rather have in this single script with all these methods already existing. And the great thing is, all I have to do is put the stuff in here in the overloads. And it does all the work for me. I mean, it's, it's like the lazy man's thing, okay? It, it, it basically is. It's a lazy way of doing everything. Write it once. Use the overloads and the function calls to do what you need to do. Okay. And notice this find object. This is private. This cannot be called in any other script. Unless you do raid sorted. Okay. Raid sorted calls this. So if we want to make some type of float return or whatnot. Then we can. We can make it over. Uh, overridable as well you know if you want to override it just put a virtual on there and override the method you know that it's it's completely up to you this sorted raycast I don't have this overrided but I'm gonna put different types of raycast in here and then we will be able to use those raycasts for what we need So, and, and basic kick. Look, basic kick. Vector for the kick, transform, and smooth time. And this does all that kickback stuff that our weapon does. I mean, literally, this is the code for it. Now, if we want a different type of kickback, all we have to do is write another kickback. Okay, and in the weapon class, where it goes kick like here like here call me a liar blah that kind of sucky okay where's our kickback variable is it in sniper 
Must be in sniper. Kick, kick, kick. We need a kick. Oh, right here it is. Kick. See how this is a virtual? If we went and wanted to make a different kick, all we have to do is in the, the weapon class that we have, we'll go up here and we'll go... Let's say we created it and we don't like the kickback on this. Well, all you have to do is go up here in public, override, and we can override the kickback. Okay, we are not going to call the base version and we could just type whatever we want in here for a kickback. Or better yet, if you don't want no kick, there you go. That's all you got to do. Now you. Point play done. No kickback whatsoever. Okay, and I'm like, well, this is pretty flexible, and I, I really like this. Okay, it gives you the flexibility to do things. You got your weapon set. Well, let's say we want to call the kick. Kick basic one, and then we just do a. We'll just put vector three dot zero as an example. Then we need our weapon T transform. Oh, if I write it correctly, weapon T transform and smoothing. 0F and there you go kick back and that now I'm not saying this works but you, you see how easy it is to write we've got a method we give it an overload and bam there you go kick back done instead of the big old long job of doing a kickback okay and if you really wanted to when you go into sniper right here this is you don't have to call this one right here you can leave this blank okay and when you create your weapon like your rifle 308 or basic sniper rifle or whatever you want to call it all you have to do is just basically instead of kickback one go in your mono your uh, behavior your war behaviors or whatever you want to call your script because the script doesn't care you know what you call it just your uh, weapon actions just has to inherit from it okay and you can create another method all you have to do is go up here to public and if you want it overridable put virtual void do this stuff okay and there's your method okay so when you go into your bullets and stuff like that and you're like well I want this method to be I want to call something so let's just put it right here every frame I want to call this do this stuff bam there you go and you're like you're probably seeing the, the concept here that's that's kind of nice right but here's the thing. Look, watch this. Basic player. You're going to go down here. Here. You're going to go do this stuff. Well, it doesn't exist. And you're like, why? Why does it not exist? Because we don't inherit from weapons. Okay? But if you had a method in there and you wanted to use it I'm not saying this is the way you can do it 
this is the proper way to do it, but you can. You can go up here, and you can go War Mono Behavior War equals new and get a variable of it. Okay. And then go war dot kickback and now you can access that variable. Do this stuff. Now it's success. But Creating something like this as an object like this, not good. Don't do it. Garbage collecting. Okay? And you have to do the new in order for it to exist. Because you have to instantiate uh, the an instance of it. Which, you know, brings us up to our next thing. You could just make this static but the problem with it is you cannot overwrite this if it's static okay that's why I don't want it because look no virtual override for it so if we go into our player stuff we wanted to do something like that it's really not well I think you can but I wouldn't recommend it. Because now you can go war mono behavior dot do this stuff. Okay? But there is a problem with this. Okay? The reason why I don't like doing it this way for this type of thing is in some, if you have like floats out here that are non-static you can't use them in here everything that is in here if you want to call something on the outside it has to be a static variable okay which kind of sucks or you have to instantiate all your values and stuff like that in here or pass them in the variable right here like this right here this could be a static method I'm not going to lie because it, it does everything it needs to do right here and then this. So I could use this as a static, but the problem with it is I want this to be overwritable and I do not want this to be accessible by any other class other than the weapons because there's no reason to have a kickback for a player or anything else. It's, it's just dumb. It's just dumb thinking to me. I mean, maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't know. It depends on your game, but I wouldn't do it. Instead, what I would do is do like I have done. You have your basic player. We'll sneak a peek. And this goes to slaughter, slaughter player sneak peek and now I have a player mono behavior now let's go look at that this does all of our player stuff okay and if you watch my other video you will understand what this is grounded variable is because you're like why don't you controller dot is grounded don't do that because here's what happens this is a physics call. I believe this is some type of physics call because it starts bumping up the physics if you call this too many times. And I'm calling this this stuff right here every frame. So I need this to not do something crazy sauce. Okay. So I moved all my player stuff, move direction and all that good stuff in here. Okay, all my basic logic for my controller, the character control, is right here. I don't have to do anything like that. I made this abstract so you cannot attach it to a game object, this class directly. Okay. 
And all you need to do to make this creatable is pass all these values in here. Which I could probably, yeah, I can put it all on one screen. It'll let me. A controller, call it controller, move direction, speed, jump speed, gravity, horizontal, and vertical. And a bull for is grounded. Because remember, in my basic thing, I do not want my I do not want my let's close that I do not want this to be called multiple times okay that's why I created this new bool here and then Inside here, I go equals controller dot is grounded. So it'll go frame, frame, frame. Okay, think of it like that. So in a single frame, it's going to call all this stuff, including this stuff in here. So if I go is grounded here, and then is grounded in our player behavior that's calling it twice which is kind of heavy or at least I thought you may think it's fine you know if that's what you want to do then do but I didn't want to do it so there it is now we have our move directions and stuff like that and, you know our jump I just used the regular input get button doesn't you know mean anything whatsoever you know it just calls it one time this is for jumping and then move direction dot y you know controller move which right here this this thing right here I'm about to use some type of buffer I think method for that because here's the thing every single frame that I call this it's kind of freaking heavy man and I, what I'm thinking is if I make like a buffer, okay, where this gets called every like X amount of seconds, then it would probably make these calls a lot less performant heavy because this right here happens every frame. And if you don't, if you never use controller.move, you can see that it's kind of like it, it's kind of heavy I'm not gonna lie it's kind of heavy but uh yeah that's the changes that I made into this script and you know it was 23 minutes oh my gosh imagine if I put it into the other video it would have been oh it have been like close to an hour that would have been crazy. You guys would have been so tired of hearing about it. But I did make this overwritable as well. So if this doesn't work for you, you can overwrite it. Okay? It, it's not going to care. But I'm going to change this back because this is going to drive me nuts. It's not the way that I do stuff. It's going to be confusing. Confusing! So... I hope this helps you and I hope that uh, this inspires you to do other things than just you know the traditional scripts and I want to you know thank you guys for watching I know it was a kind of a long video and things like that but it couldn't have been helped because there's a lot of crazy sauce stuff going on here you know it's not exactly a tutorial that you'll find on the internet very easily so i've got a unique one out there so thank you guys very much for watching this is Wardon over and out